Do you know what happens when ASUS goes really hard on your products? Well, you get this ASUS ROG Real4 SLC360 AIO. At least the name of this product is not that hard to remember. Let's remove this main sleeve. And this inner box opens up like this. There's a mannequin in here. This box smells really funny, like pieces of damn used cardboards. And the first main thing you should notice is this card with the ROG logo and tagline for those who dare. It even tells you that this is unit number 291658. But I do not exactly know how many are there right now. The next thing you will notice is how well packaged this, for lack like of a better word, package is. There are individual boxes and compartments for the radiator. You see the labels with the fans, the accessories box, the LCD screen and the palm slash LCD screen module combo. Installing the LCD screen on this module is pretty easy, which you can see from the guide over here. But anyway, I will show you how it works later. So let's remove all one by one. I'm going to take out the accessories box first. It is the easiest. Then the screen box. Okay, so how about the main piece? How do you exactly remove it? Okay, so it's actually one whole piece and the whole thing comes out finally. So let's remove the cardboard. Regal the LCD mount first, then pull the one on the radiator. For the LCD mount, you can see the wire in the hole. So you have to first lead the wires out, then pull the mount away from the cardboard. Next, what's inside the accessories box? Hmm, this one also smells really funny. <laughs> <laughs> this is the back plate for Intel CPUs and this is, uh, what do I call this? The pump tube separator. Oh, it is called the tube fastener. And on the edges, you have a pair of mounting brackets for AMD CPUs. And below it, that's the quick start guide. Really quick start because there's not a lot of steps. And next, you have these two packets. One of them has the plastic collars for Intel CPUs and the other one has screws to mount the radiator to your PC case. And we finish it with the warranty for and stickers for the cooler. This ROG Real 4 is made for one thing in mind. That is to reduce the clutter from the messy wiring as well as to create a cleaner look from these shorter palm tubes. Because of the length of these palm tubes, there's only one place, one location where you can mount this radiator, which is possibly also the best way to hide all of the wiring. That said, these are pretty well braided tubes. As they are several grade, they are dense and thick to ensure that there's no leakage of coolant from the tubes. For this real 4, minus the LCD screen, everything comes in essentially one whole piece. The three 120mm fans are pre-installed on the radiator and they are also pre-daisy chained. I like that the fans are pre-installed in the direction where the wires can be hidden and there's only one set of wires to control the fan speed as well as the ARGB on the fans. Let me remove the three fans to take a better look at the radiator as well as the three fans. There are 12 radiator screws, so make sure you don't lose them after you have removed all 12 screws. Okay, so how do you separate these fans? It is a push up, push down? No, I guess you just have to pull them apart. Okay, this makes sense because this pair of hooks go onto these holes on the left side of the fan. Okay, it looks like all three fans are made similar but also different at the same time. All three fans are 2650 RPM fans. They feature the ROG logo on the fan hub and as well as what ASUS calls the Aura Edge which are the ARGB designs on the top and bottom of the fans. The fan housings, while made of plastic, do feel pretty strong, which is important to withstand the high speeds coming from the fan blades. But, as I have mentioned, each fan is built differently. This one has the hooks and data connectors on the right. The one in the center has both data receivers and transmitters on the left and right respectively. This last fan also carries the PWM and ARGB wires. Putting the three fans back is also pretty simple. Align the data transmitter end to the receiver and snap the two fans together. Do the same also for the third fan. There is no guessing required as to which fan goes onto which side. The radiator is about 40 cm long, 14 cm wide and 3.2 cm thick. It features a brushed aluminum finish, feels very really strong and well built and it does have a good amount of weight to it. It has a simple design with a textured or sunk in ROG text on the center. But the great thing is the very dense fin stack 
across the radiator. This is probably the most dense fin array which I have seen on any radiator. But we'll have to see how much of this actually helps with the cooling of CPUs. There are two sets of holes to mount the fans onto the radiator. While we can only use the outer holes on the bottom to install fans, for the top, you can choose between the inner and outer mounting holes. Though this brings up the question, does this actually interfere with the efficiency of heat removal? Just a quick note, you'll not be able to move, turn or twist the tubes that are on the radiator. They are sealed in one direction and angle. But the tubes on the pump, you can move both of them from left to right, depending on where you want the tubes to be. And now we head on to the main piece, the pump module. This is where the LCD screen will lie. There's a plate here, which the LCD screen also has. It does not seem to serve any data transfer, so my guess is it could be used as a contact plate to transfer heat from the LCD screen to cycle it through the pump and back out of the radiator. But this is just purely my opinion. This velcro strap here is a cool accessory to also showcase the LG logo, which you can remove if you want to see the logo on the LCD screen instead. And going down, this is the pump which runs up to 3200 RPM plus minus 10%. FYI, there's supposed to be a very unique LG design thermal paste on this cold plate, but as this is a used cooler, there is no thermal paste. <laughs> You can also see the AMD mounting plate together with the mounting screws which are pre-installed on the pump. You can remove this mounting plate but there's actually no need because you will need this plate anyway and also second point, I also don't see any way to remove the mounting screws from this mounting plate. And lastly, you will have this 4-pin pump wire. How do you install this AIO? Let me show you. And lucky me, I have both Intel and AMD platforms to show you. You take this backplate and you align it with the four mounting holes on your motherboard. To mount the backplate, you can remove these tape films first before you apply the backplate onto the socket backplate. You can't change the size of this backplate. They are the same for both LG 1700 and 1851. Then you put the four plastic collars over the four mounting points on the backplate. The next step, which is to mount the water block, is the same for both Intel and AMD. But before you do that for AMD, do remove the socket brackets first. Then for both AMD and Intel, you can align the mounting screws over the mounting points and tighten the screws. I like to hand tighten the screws in a X fashion first before using a screwdriver to tighten the screws. This allows the water block to be installed more equally across the four points. In the case that you're not able to reach the mounting screws, you can move this mount from left to right to access the screws. After you have mounted the water block, you can plug in the PWM wire to the fan header on your motherboard as well as the 3 pin ARGB also on your motherboard. I also will use this pump header for the pump wire over here. Next, we have this huge 6.67 inch curved screen. Yes, it is as big as your smartphone. This screen is housed inside this equally big module with exhaust ports and there's quite a few RG designs and logos splattered over it. It is in a way similar to the Tri-X panorama such that you can attach and detach this LCD screen on the water block. What's amazing is you can control the screen with just one USB cable. There is no need for additional SATA cables or even a Type-C cable. How does ASUS do that? Wow. And voila, your AIO is installed. Okay, so let's take this AIO for a spin. I'm going to first test a Ryzen 7 7700X with this ASUS ROG X670E-F and its pair of 32GB King Bank RAM. This 7700X is known to run hot, so let's see how well this real 4 can tame it. Starting with Citibench R23, the 7700X ran at an average of 82 degrees C with highs of up to 93 degrees C. Mind you, these are out-of-the-box settings for the 7700X. For Cinebench 2024, it was slightly cooler at an average of 79 degrees C and highs of up to 92 degrees C. In games such as Rainbow Six Siege, 
the 7700X ran at 67 to 70 degrees C on 1080p medium with something like 104 watts power use. On a lesser CPU bound setting like 1080p very high, it ran at around 60 to 62 degrees C with an almost 90 watts use. For AAA titles such as Cyberpunk, the 7700X ran at 67 to 70 degrees C when you drive down the road and it goes up to 72 degrees C during the firefight. Because Cyberpunk generally uses more of the graphics card, the 7700X ran similar on a higher setting such as 1080p Ultra. The 7700X uses an average of 135 watts to 142 watts during productivity, topping it with highs such as 145 watts during loads. Next, let's bring out the big gun, the Ryzen 9 9950X 3D. With out-of-the-box stock settings, the 9950X 3D ran at around 66 to 67 degrees C with highs of up to 78 degrees C. The temperature in the room is 26 degrees C, so there is a temperature difference of 40 to 41 for the average and 53 for the max. Next, on Cinebench 2024, the 9950X 3D also ran at an average of 66 degrees C with max of up to 78 degrees C. The 9950X 3D seems to be less involved in games compared to the 7700X. On Rainbow Six, for example, it was used 25% compared to the 7700X's 30 plus percent and sometimes 40 percent. Thus, it ran slightly cooler, 68 to 70 degrees C on medium and also similar on the low setting. We also see similar results on Cyberpunk 2077, about 69 to 70 degrees C while driving down the road and it spikes to 73 to 74 degrees C during the firefight. The 9950X 3D ran at 120 plus watts going in between plus minus 5 watts during the gameplay, also a 1080p low. I'm also going to borrow some numbers from Clio to push the 9950X 3D even further. In Cinebench 2024, the 9950X 3D ran higher at 68 to 70 degrees with highs of up to 81 degrees C. In Cinebench R23, the 9950X 3D also ran higher at an average of 71 degrees C with a highs of up to 82 plus degrees C. But that said, even on a very overclocked 9950X 3D, the real 4 does a really good job to keep this mighty overclocked 9950X 3D at a good temperature even when pushed hard in Cinebench R23 and 2024. But there's a caveat. I have left the fence with the standard fan curves while the pump was running at full speed. Thus, during Cinebench R23, the pump ran at 3100 RPM and the fence slightly over 2000 RPM. And it gets even louder here. These are 2600 RPM fans. But don't worry, if you're just gaming, it doesn't get this loud. You will only hear the fans spin at 1.5k RPM during gameplay, but for some reason, the fans do ramp up when the game is loading. Now that we are done with numbers, let's play with this LCD screen. And to change what you see on the screen, you will need to download this new software called the ASUS Info Hub. This ASUS Info Hub is a separate application and it's not integrated with Armory Crate. You can find this software in the download section on the AIO's website. I had some problems getting the screen settings portion to work initially, so if you have the same problem as I, do check the connections with your USB 2.0 port on your motherboard. So like Armory Crate, this info hub shows you the current numbers of your CPU and GPU, such as the frequency, voltage, how much they are being used, as well as the other various temperatures of your components in your system. It also tells you the speeds of your spinning parts, such as the pump in your AIO, the fans on your AIO, as well as the other fans you have in your system. But unlike Armory Crate, you are not able to adjust the fan curves and speeds in this ASUS info hub. In settings, you can switch to a different language, change from degrees Celsius to Fahrenheit if you want the application to launch on startup and also change the screen recordings to another folder, etc. So let's finally play with the LCD screen. This AIO, like the Triax Panorama, allows you to have one full screen or one split screen. 
You can choose from a variety of preset videos or add your own videos. If you do not have your own collection of videos, you could always record what you see on the screen. The screen recording app is pretty okay. You just press the record button. You can set the size of your screen recording and you press the record button and you'll start recording for up to 20 plus seconds. You will then crop the video and choose the start and end of the video. And if you want to add videos from a gallery, you also will do the same things. Besides that, you can add various readouts for your components such as the CPU, GPU, motherboard, your fans, and even the date and time on your system. You can choose where you want to place the readouts. There are preset areas where you can put these readouts. It also gives you a live preview on the readouts when you place on the screen. If you don't like the green and white which I have chosen, you can also change the colors of the titles and the content. When you are happy with what you have set, you press apply to change the LCD screen. From there, you can adjust the brightness of the screen or if you want to turn it off, you can also do so here. For the split screen, you can see that the main screen occupies the flat front area while the other half takes up the vertical right side on the screen. The add and record functions are of the same but I recommend using a vertical video for the smaller side because of the cropping aspect ratio. Besides that, the readout locations are also the same. And after going through this software, at least from my experience, this ASUS InfoHub on first use was better and easier to navigate compared to Triaxis Canali software. So good job ASUS on this one. All of these features are definitely very nice. But of course, this Wheel 4 isn't going to be very affordable. I found really high, interesting prices from two Singapore resellers. One goes for Singapore 595 and the other Singapore 699. That's a very really high price for CPU cooler. In comparison, the Triax Panorama 360 goes for Singapore 509 and the Ryujin 3 360 Extreme goes for Singapore 569. Anyway, if we look beyond the high price, there are a few yeses and noes for this real 4. The yeses, number one, is a very easy AIO to install. The fans are pre-installed, the AMD mount and screws are pre-installed, and there are a relatively few components required to install this AIO. I think this is probably the fastest AIO which you can actually install. Number two, I like the paneling on the fans. It is a very cool way to feature a distinct panel artwork across the three fans. Other fans tend to be empty or have infinity mirrors or simple ARGB lights. This is different in a way. The cooling power on this Wheel 4 is really really good. The 9950X 3D stayed at a pretty good temperature even when pushed by Cinebench. I was also able to squeeze it further when I added Cleo's numbers but still keeping it at a relatively okay-ish temperature. The 7700X for being a very hot CPU also ran pretty okay under the real 4. Number 4, of course, this big 6.67 inch curved screen is just a sight to behold. The videos are so clear and of a very high definition. I also like that the accompanying software is easy to use and it didn't take me a long time to figure it out. And the big readouts are a great feature. Though because of the bezels, you'll not be able to get the full 100% screen. Okay, the not so good points. One, I'm not a fan of these short tubes yet you can only bend the tubes to this amount. The better option will be to have a longer case so that the tubes will be stretched further. These two tubes are a bit tad close to the fans. Number two, if you're not a fan of top mounts, this AIO is not for you. Because of the shorter tubes, there is no functional way to side mount this real four. If you want to side mount an AIO like this, you can always get the Ryujin 3 or you have to wait for ASUS to launch the non-SLC variant for this AIO. We did see this one at Computex. Number three, the noise from the fans is less than desired. Granted, you will probably not hear all of this noise most of the time if you just use your PC for gaming. But I am here to tell you, you will hear the loud booms like a jet engine running when you have a PC with the real 4 running at max when you're using it for creation or for rendering projects. It may or may not be an issue for you, but the fans, while producing a lot of performance, also produce a lot of noise. So up to you on this one. Anyway, I do like this cooler, but I still prefer a cooler with the standard length longer tubes. Let me know in the comments if you are a fan of this cooler. Like if you like this video, catch you in the next one.